I'm continuing talking about the instruments of the orchestra, but before getting into a specific one, I'm going to talk about the layout of the orchestra. This will be on the test. I have a um, nice image here for you. This is available on D2L in the folder marked first test. Be sure you download that and study it. As you can see, the string instruments are the red colors. Through the middle are the green instruments, the woodwinds. Around the back are the trumpets, the brass instruments. Uh, and to the left are the percussion instruments. You do not need to worry about the keyboard or the chorus. Um, and again, this will be on the test. What I will be doing is showing you a blank one of these images, these charts, and expect you to fill in all of the correct instruments. Here is another diagram. Um, I've also uploaded this. I will use the first diagram on the test. This is just another way of looking at the orchestra. The way things will work on the test, I will be asking you about pitch range. That's all that's really important about these instruments. I might ask something like, which plays higher, the violin or the viola, the violin, that sort of thing. So most of what you're going to be hearing in these videos are actually not going to be on the test. So don't worry too much about it. I'll make it very, very clear as we go along. So the first um, instrument that I want to talk about is the flute. Very important instrument in the woodwind section. There it is. It is made out of metal and has quite a complex uh, system of keys, mechanical system, to open and close holes. My name is Roma Duncan and I play piccolo and flute in the Minnesota Orchestra. The flute is a member of the woodwind family, which is a little bit funny when you consider that most modern flutes aren't made out of wood anymore. Many of them are silver, mine happens to be gold, and it's kind of a personal choice which metal you play. The gold is a little bit more mellow, a little bit warm, the silver a little bit more brilliant and projecting. I have this little lip plate and there's a hole in the top, so I don't blow into the flute, I blow across the hole, and there's a very sharp edge here. That's gonna split the air into two streams and cause a vibration. The vibration goes down the length of the flute, and I can show you with just the head joint, this is, the, this is where the sound comes from. And it goes higher or lower. But I need to be a little bit more exact than that in the orchestra. So I attach it to the body and I've got all of these buttons, which we call keys. And you'll notice I have more keys than fingers. <laughs> so there are, there are these rods and mechanisms that connect them and that's how I get the individual notes. So for the most part, when I lift a finger up, the note's gonna go a little bit higher. And when I put a finger down, the note is gonna go lower. That's our general rule of thumb. And I'll play you from the lowest note to one of the highest notes on the flute so you can get an idea of its range. The flute is often asked to play melodies in the orchestra uh, because it does have a very distinctive sound, but is also a very soft sound. So a composer needs to be very careful how he orchestrates passages with the flute. Now we have the sister of the flute, the piccolo, which plays very high. They actually read the exact same notes but the instrument itself plays an octave higher than the flute. So next come the double reed instruments, the oboe, English horn, bassoon, and contrabassoon. 
And indeed, these instruments use a reed, a piece of cane that comes from uh, a swamp or some other thing like that. Uh, and they are cut in half um, and then shaved down. It actually takes quite a great deal of effort and time to shave down these reeds so that they are absolutely perfect. So the first instrument is the oboe. Looks like that. Once again, we have a very, very complex system of mechanical uh, keys on the surface of the instrument that open and close holes to get the different pitches. There is an example of the reed for the oboe and an image of all the uh, reeds and how it gets folded in half. You tie it together, you shave down the end. Very long time consuming process. The oboe is often asked to play a melody because of its beautiful, warm sound. It is also a sound that can easily uh, be heard over an entire orchestra. Hello everyone, I'm the RPO Principal Oboe, Eric Baer. Hi, and I'm Anna Seltenpol, the RPO's second oboe player and English horn player. We're going to explain both the similarities and differences between the oboe and English horn. Here we have the oboe. The oboe comes in three pieces, the bell, the middle joint, and the top joint. On top of that sits an oboe reed. Just like the oboe, the English horn also comes in three different pieces, the bell, middle joint, top joint, and I have a reed as well, but I also have a bocal. The bocal allows me to play the English horn in a normal position. Otherwise, I'd have to play like this, which is awkward. <laughs> The oboe's reed is a little bit smaller, but we both have the same struggles with making reeds in that we have to bring cane over, import cane from France where they have the good wine. And that cane is then used in, in a process of gouging and splitting and pre-gouging. And when you get a perfect reed, it's incredibly liberating and wonderful to play. So when the concert master walks onto stage, he or she will look at the oboe player and I will play the tuning A. The reason the oboe plays the tuning A is because our sound is quite a penetrating sound and so everybody can hear it. So the English horn is pitched a fifth lower than the oboe. Despite their differences, the oboe and the English horn still make beautiful music together. Now we have the bassoon, one of the low playing woodwind instruments. Most of the time it is playing in the background, but every now and then it does get a solo. There it is, the instrument um, has a one big tube that has been folded in half, and there is the reed for the bassoon. Naturally, it is a larger reed than the one used for the oboe. Bassoon is a fairly heavy instrument, so you may notice that she's using a strap to help hold the instrument up. When an or a bassoonist is playing in an orchestra, he sits on a strap to help the hold the weight of the instrument. 
We now have the contra bassoon, the lowest playing woodwind, and indeed, pretty much the lowest playing instrument in the orchestra. Hi, I'm Luke Whitehead, and this is the contra bassoon. The contra is made of uh, over five meters of tubing, which is turned uh, out of maple. It's made in various sections um, to achieve the folding over of the instrument with little U-bends, as you can see, at various points. On its own, the reed sounds like this. But then that creates the vibration within the tubing of the instrument. It uh, goes down to the lowest note, which is bottom B flat, which is the B flat right at the bottom of a grand piano keyboard. Um, and sounds like this. Finally, we have the clarinet. It uses a single reed. The clarinet is often asked to play melodies in the orchestra and it has a very unique sound, probably the most pure sound in the orchestra. It most resembles a sine wave. The instrument itself has, once again, a complex series of uh, keys, uh, which open and close holes to get the different pitches on the instrument. Here comes the mouthpiece, where you can see the single reed which has been clamped to the mouthpiece by something called the ligature. Hello, my name is Gabriel Campos Zamora and I'm the principal clarinet of the Minnesota Orchestra. And when we put our reed uh, next to the mouthpiece, it vibrates and it creates a sound. And I'll just take the mouthpiece off from the clarinet and show you how that sounds by itself. Or you could play a tune from Gershwin. In addition to the regular clarinet, there is the bass clarinet, as you can see there, which plays very low notes, not quite as low as the contra bassoon. Here is an example with all the woodwinds playing together. There's the English horn. In the background, you can hear bassoons. This is a special clarinet that plays very high. It's an E-flat clarinet. And there's the bass clarinet, that instrument honking in the background. Some flutes playing. And that high clarinet. Finally, the saxophones, it's a rare instrument in the orchestra. But here's an example of the soprano sax.
and the tenor sax. It is mostly a matter of history that the saxophone is not a standard instrument in the orchestra. <laughs> 